everybody, I'm Dane Sanders and I want to welcome you to Fast Track Coaching. This is, um, I don't know what episode this is, 113 I think, something like that. And uh, today's show um, is going to be a, a real treat and it's interesting how Providence has set this one up and I'll say more about that in just a second. But um, for those of you who are new to Fast Track Coaching and haven't been here before, welcome. Uh, the way this works is we have about a 30 minute phone call. Uh, or video chat actually uh, between me and my guest and today's guest uh, I'll introduce in just a second uh, and the intention is for us to have a dialogue where it's not just the two of us but it's me my guest and you and if you decide not just to be a spectator but to be a participant we welcome your participation um, think of it as like we're all sitting around having coffee and we get to really engage on a regular basis around authentic questions things that really are meaningful for you to both 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 move your business forward as well as your uh, creativity and uh, I think today will be definitely one of those kinds of conversations we have a lot of folks on today uh, want to just recognize a lot of folks uh, that have, have just uh, joined us today I see Allison and Colleen and Danita and uh, Andrea Williams and um, for those of you who are in Canada I kind of feel like I'm on romper room right now saying hi Jeff I see you hi Jen hi Jody Klassen uh, and it's it's fun because this is a real deal it's a community of real people having a real conversation hey Robbie Clay good to see you um, and just just so many so glad so many of you guys are here so uh, without further ado if you want to ask a question oh JB Sally good to see you man um, there's a little in the lower right hand corner of your uh, the vocal setup there is a little light bulb icon if you click on it you can ask questions directly uh, you can also of course um, uh, plug in your video camera and ask a video question and we can approve that and bring you on screen as well so rather than just going in the chat room and saying hi uh, although that's a great place to go um, uh, or even asking questions on Twitter uh, with the at Dane Sanders tag it would be most helpful if you could ask the questions through the the light bulb interface because that way we can pull your questions on screen so without further ado um, I want to introduce you to my guest uh, Lori Nordstrom has become a friend of mine uh, you know, we've known each other in industry for a long time, but more recently, in the last year or so, a little year or two, we've become uh, far closer. And she was a part of Escalate Live, which is a, a huge uh, deal um, that we had got to put on uh, last fall. And if you don't know about that, check out EscalateLive.com. But um, really pleased to have Lori on the show formally with Fast Track because um, the topic of today is around design and how design. Uh, designing relates to what we do and can help boost your business and it's interesting totally disconnected from my conversation with Lori was um, my own kind of adventures in playing with design and I'm gonna point out something that I've been playing with just a second uh, where is it got it so um, this book right here, Ordering Disorder, Grid Principles of Web Design, this is about as geeky a book as I could ever imagine picking up. And I picked it up because I'm really intrigued by the nature of design and specifically um, how people design things, meaning how do they... Um, by the way, have you guys ever plugged an earphone in your ear and the earphone thing sticks in your ear? Not only is it gross, but it's, um, it's awkward. So, but I got mine out, so it's not stuck in there for life. So, um, this book, <laughs> Ordering Disorder, <laughs> thanks for that, is um, uh, it's all about how do you ask questions around um, both the function of a problem you want to solve and then the aesthetic or the form. And I actually wrote a blog post about it on, on my site. You should check it out. Um, but the conversation we're going to have today with Lori actually has to do with interior design relative to child portraiture. And I think it's going to be really interesting. So without further ado, uh, let's welcome Lori Nordstrom to the stage. Hey, Lori. Good to see you, my friend. Hello. And you need to get a whole lot closer to your screen because I look giant next to you. <laughs> okay. How's this? Yay. Hi, Lori. <laughs> it's much better. That's, much better. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know that that's true. Uh, but I'm uh, really glad you're here. And, Hi, everybody. And for those who don't uh, don't know uh, who you are, which is I d can't imagine actually, because uh, with this kind of traffic, I'm pretty sure they they found out that you were on on the show, which is why they're all here. But um, tell us a little bit about your history uh, in photography, kind of where you got your start and where you got to where you are today, 
uh, and just give us a kind of a brief a brief snapshot on on your journey in photo. Well, it feels like a loaded question, and <laughs> but uh, you, you know, and first before I even start, I just want to tell you thank you, and I want to say that you are so brave for doing this every week. I have been nervous, and I don't usually get nervous about this kind of thing. But you know, usually I'm I'm sharing the photographers on my downtime in my pajamas, <laughs> and no one's watching. So um, I just want to say you're very brave for doing this. Well, you, you've seen you've seen Anchorman, but, uh, right? You don't you don't know what I'm wearing underneath there, and I'm I'm not nervous at all. What do you, what do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> so tell us feeling. tell us about you. <laughs> um. I actually started in the industry about 15 years ago, which seems like a long time now. I know for years it'd be like, oh, I've been in the business for a year or three years or even five years. It always sounded like such little time, but 15 years. And I did start with uh, just photographing my kids, which is how so many young women start in the business now. I'm sorry, guys, but uh, as we all know, girls are taking over and um, yeah, I, I started the same way a lot of a lot of you did 15 years ago photographing my kids. I owned a hair salon and just photographed my kids. Photographing kids outside in the backyard, which at the time, you know, it was all five lights and classic backgrounds and classic posing. And, you know, here this girl came on the scene that was running around in the backyard barefoot chasing kids. And I got a lot of the, you know, who do you think you are, <laughs> you know, kind of thing coming on the scene. And now things are so different and, you know, the way that real life sort of shooting and, and perspective is so, you know, just, just embraced. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the reasons why I think that young women in the business, you know, kind of have taken over because we do start photographing our children and we fall in love with, with the images and, and with our kids along with the images. And, and, you know, it's just a natural thing to start wanting to photograph our friends' kids and their friends' kids. And then, you know, it turns into this beautiful thing that we can do as a business. So, um, you know, in that way, I think it's been a natural evolution with the, the growth of the technology that we have and the ease of getting that technology and then producing beautiful images. And for me, part of that growth and evolution has been um, you know, I've had to decide over the years, you know, starting with photographing kids outside in the backyard, that quote unquote journalistic style that back then was just, you know, kind of starting to happen. And taking, going from there to um, realizing that children came from babies. And so I made my market maternity and baby. That was my target market so that I could photograph those kids. And now, because of just that natural evolution of, of where we are in the industry, photographing babies and photographing newborns has become this huge thing that young women love to do and they should love to do. And, but because of that, I've had to look back and take a step back and say, okay, what's next for me? Because while I still love photographing babies and photographing kids, you know, if, I, if I'm gonna think that that is my niche and that's my market, I'm, I'm going to go under because honestly, right now, I can't compete on the, on the basis of photography. There is going to be somebody that will do it cheaper and, you know, often, oftentimes now better. And, you know, that used to be one of the you know, photographer in my area. And anymore, I mean, let's just be honest with each other. Taking it a pretty picture is not a difficult thing to do. So I've had to step back and say, okay, if, I, if photography is not my product, which again, I've just come to that realization for me personally that photography is not my product anymore because someone can get it cheaper, some can, someone can get it better. So I've had to look and say, what is my product? And in the end, what my product has become has, it's, be, it's been what we've kind of been after for many years, which is decorating for the wall. Although when I started in the industry, it was that wall portrait that traditionally, um, you know, that the men who had been in the business for 20 years were saying, you know, you sell a wall portrait. And so, of course, I tried selling wall portraits and I did. I sold, have sold thousands over the years. But, you know, as, as time went on, I realized a wall portrait wasn't the right thing for everyone. And so, you know, so now we've gone into more of a, a design process with our clients and we're building custom wall concepts for them and that has become our product in the studio and I believe that's what's allowed the studio to be sustainable 
right now with the industry as it is and you know for me that means a photographer on every corner and we all we all know that that's true right now um, and whether it'll stay that way or not is yet to be seen and I think everything that is happening right now is so exciting with um, you know just more and more love of photography and photographers on the scene and um, you know but on the other hand of that what it's caused me to do as a studio to be profitable is to decide what my product is and it just can't be photography anymore for me even though photography yeah. is really still it well it's it's interesting because uh, you know uh, we had Seth Godin on a couple weeks back and we were talking a lot about from the outsiders perspective looking in on our industry what um, what does he think about photography and a lot of what he had to say was and and I we've heard this in other industries over and over again if it's not a the product isn't what we sell it's the product of the product or it's the there's so many different ways to frame out what it is that we're up to and and one of the things I've always appreciated about you Lori and it's funny because so many folks are are commenting on this in the chat room right now that they just whether it be Jeff Rogers is such a fan of yours and uh, uh, JB and 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 so although JB thinks that you need to tan uh, just so you have some color balance ah. issues. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just I, I uh, I'm I'm really struck by your willingness to kind of jump in and reinvent or maybe reinvent is not quite the right word but kind of reconsider what it is that we're offering people uh, like when um, you know when you did what you did with uh, with the focus on children portraiture maternity uh, and like young young babies that was pretty revolutionary at the time and and even now what you're describing is it's kind of expanding what we're offering and is very much in line with what Seth was talking about with was this if you if you are doing what everybody else is doing like his purple cow concept of if you're gonna sell if you're a cow and you're selling milk you want to stand out from the herd your cow better be purple and uh, there's a sense in which that you are constantly willing to put yourself into this position of like, no, no, if, if you think I'm one of those, I'm not, I'm something new. Um, is, is that, is that just, is that a, a universal that everyone can actually pull off? And I know my own thoughts on this, but I want to hear yours. When you, every time I see you, you have a new book that you're reading. You have a new, I saw you reading Unmarketing uh, when we were together in, last fall and that got me, I read the book and actually connected with Scott Stratton about some stuff. and. And you're constantly inspiring people to kind of expand our thinking. And I wonder, is, is that just kind of the MO that all photographers need, or all creatives need to have? Um, or, or is there some alternative where is this is just really your personality and you happen to be this kind of a learner? Yeah, how critical is it to kind of be in this mindset of I need to reinvent again and again and again? Well, I think um, the idea of reinvention is is one thing, but on the other side of that, I think you have to really know who you are first, and you know, and and I've called it evolving. Um, just in this conversation, you know, reinvention is kind of another way to look at it, but I think you have to know who you are for, at the core first. And I know you talk a lot about creativity and finding your style, and and you know, and and you know, how do you do that? And my take on, on both creativity and finding your style are, it has to come from you. And once you know who you are, if I can define my personality and who I am, it's going to start showing up in my work. I'm going to start seeing that as a style. I can use those words in my marketing. I can use those words in my communication process with my client. And so that has to come first. And once that happens, there is only one me. And there is only one Dane. And there is only one Jeff Rogers. You know, and, and so as you grow and change, those things can grow and change with you. And, and so that's, you know, kind of at the core for me is, um, you know, always reinventing a newer version of me. And so instead of trying to reinvent and become something else. And, um, mm. and part of that is, uh, you know, learning and growing and, you know, reading books, like you mentioned. I am always looking at... Uh, businesses, companies, trends outside of our industry. And for, for my personal growth, I think that's much more powerful and important for me and my business personally to look at what's happening outside of our industry instead of always saying, okay, what's this photographer doing or how is she shooting or how is he marketing? Um, you know, those kind of things I want to kind of leave alone because I want to, I want it to come from me. I want it to come from um, more, I don't want to say 
global ideas, but you know, just more trends that are happening in the marketplace. And, and that's one of the reasons why even developing now into uh, going towards interior design is, it, you know, that's what's still selling. In a down economy, people are really still fascinated by looking the best, by having the best, by, you know, making sure their home looks beautiful when people walk in it, making sure they're still driving the right car. People will spend money on things like that that are important to them. And, you know, while at the core of it, I think it's um, a little sad. <laughs> you know, I just came home from Ecuador and, you know, when you're there in the middle of poverty and people that have nothing, um, you know, it is kind of sad, a sad reality, but it's the reality that we live in. And, you know, I have to run a business and I have said many times over the years that I don't have a choice but to do these things. I've always supported my family and I've had to work very hard. And so deciding what's right today may not be right tomorrow for my business. And I always have to have that awareness. I mean, I think that there's, you know, we get a whole other conversation about the disparity of kind of our world and what our first world concerns versus third world concerns. And I, I'm with you on a lot of that. And maybe we'll actually have you on for another call on that because I think it's worth a consideration uh, for a topic. But but for, for what we're addressing today around this idea of expanding what we normally think of, I really appreciate your emphasis on, when I say reinvention, I, I'm not saying like create something that's not authentic or true, but where I'm getting, I'm growing in my understanding of who I am and in that I'm discovering new kind of facets of, of, of what I can offer, that there's kind of an exploration. And that's what I, I feel like you have done consistently is like you're never satisfied with, oh yeah, we did that two years ago. Like you seem to be willing to jump back in and try something something new. And and it's funny, like even in negative feedback sometimes about that, like it's not always positively received. Like I think of bands that I may have liked an album that they put out a long time ago and then they might put out a whole different sounded album later. And I'm like, oh, why didn't you do that same album as you did before and their answer is obviously well because i already did that album and that actually is what keeps them perennially in front of people and interesting uh, but sometimes there can be criticism too like for example uh, this morning i got an email for, i sent a uh, email blast yesterday with uh, a bunch of recent blog posts that i'd written i wasn't selling a thing in any of my blog posts uh, so it wasn't like a commercial complaint or anything he just said um you know, what, what the heck is this? You're talking about design and what the heck is poke the box and that sounds like a Facebook thing. And the guy clearly didn't understand what I was sending. But but I wrote back, because I took, even though he was a little rude in his message, I, his heart was right. He was basically saying like, hey, I want to hear from you only if you're talking about photography. And I was so struck by that because I, I as I'm growing as a creative person, I know that photography is one important part of my life. It's really important, but it's not the singularly important thing for me. And I actually get, and I told him about my interest in design and in writing and a bunch of things. And I got to think like that might be a real problem for our whole industry moving forward is if people get so locked into one particular medium, it seems like things are going to break down. Like there's not going to be much room for expansion or creativity. Uh, or, or am I wrong on that? Like, do you, do you think that there's a need for more consideration of other mediums that could influence what we do? Uh, visually and with a camera. What do you think? Well, I, I mean, I, I think that's another thing that comes down to style and, you know, to each individual person as a photographer. And, you know, I, I've never been embarrassed to say that I'm a business person first and a photographer second and have never considered mm -hmm. myself an artist or the creative or, you know, and those kind of things, which is really, you know, it's blasphemy to a lot of photographers, you know, like how, how could you ever say that, you know, we are artists and, you know, I've, I've gotten a lot of flack for that over the years, but, you know, so I think it's different for different people that, um, you know, do I need to do the next creative thing tomorrow? You know, no, but that, does that mean it's not right for someone else? Um, for someone that, you know, that's their style is coming up with that new creative thing next week, next month, next year, and staying fresh and on top of, of creative trends, you know, that's that style and, and that person, and that's right for them. For me, yeah. the next best thing is, you know, I have to maximize every sale, maximize every client experience, maximize um, my experience in the studio, or I don't want to be here. I get bored very easily, and 
no, I don't want to be doing the same things tomorrow. But does my work, my photography look like it did 10 years ago? I mean, do I apologize for that? I'm not sure. You know, I, I have had a very, very consistent style that you can see my work in 2000 and my work now, and it looks sure. exactly the same. And, and to some well, people, I, but, a lot of photographers, that's bad. <laughs> you know, to me, that's my style and that's me. And like I said, for somebody else, their creative style is going to be finding the next cool location and finding the next, you know, yeah. color palette and the next, you know, um, cool, funky posing or angle or lens or whatever. And, you know, so I think, I think that comes back down to that core of knowing you and, you know, who you are and growing and developing you and being the best you and the most, if you want to say creative, you that you can be. And um, I yeah. find creativity in business. So. <laughs> well, it's funny you say that, Laurie, because that's what's actually striking me is, is uh, you may not call yourself an artist or a creative, but I, as I, especially as I'm looking in the chat room and hearing people comment, like you, you're perceived as that. And it's because people are acknowledged. I know I, I perceive you as a remarkably creative person, but it's not in this tightly nichified um, uh, artistic space. It's creativity with your business. It's creativity in all that you do. And even what you're saying about style really resonates with me. Like one of my favorite bands is U2 and The Edge, his, his, what he does with the guitar uh, has a very distinctive style. And even though they've changed, they've had such a broad array of albums that they put out over the last, you know, 20 years, longer than that, 30 years, they, um, they, his sound, you can hear it, you can hear his guitar in every, every song. And in the, and it sounds very similar to, you know, the war album in 1982 or whatever it was. And, and I, I think about that with you, like consistency, but yet still have creativity with what we're doing, both with uh, and other mediums that we employ, but also in our selling and what are we doing? In fact, um, I see that Kay Valsman photo, it was, she asked a question on Twitter, which sometimes I don't catch these by the way, guys. So if you could ask them in the chat, in the, um, the light bulb area, that's a little easier so we could put it up on screen. But she just was straight up, she said, Lori, have you found that the new decor approach has been working? And then she put a bunch of dollar signs, like, are you actually making money with this thing? And <laughs> what I like about what I like about the question is it's not just about creativity; it's also about results. So we're not getting creative for creative sake. It's only going to be as valid as we can get a return on it. So talk a little bit about how you are incorporating or reinventing whatever you want to call it, photography with interior decor, and how that is what kind of feedback you're getting from your clients. Um, yeah, and that's a great question and. You know, and, and yes, um, I will just answer that right away and then I'll explain. But yes, we are seeing the dollar signs in the sales room. And but part of that goes back to, you know, my original philosophy and and what I always um, when I'm consulting with other photographers, a lot of times I'm getting I'm getting from other photographers. You know, I don't want to be perceived as a salesperson. I don't want people to think I'm selling them. I don't want to be viewed as this. And, you know, the key word that I keep hearing in that is I, I, I. And so hmm. when you go into the sales room, if you're thinking about how you're going to be perceived, if you're going to be perceived as a salesperson, your focus is in the wrong place. Your focus does not need to be on how I'm going to be perceived. It's going to needs to be on what I can do for my client. And if that's the focus, you're never going to be perceived as a salesperson. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, worrying about how you're going to look or if you're going to look as a salesperson is a very self-centered position. And that's a hard thing for people to hear because they feel like they're being selfless and saying, I don't want to be, I don't want to be pushy. I don't want to be a salesperson. But you know, in reality, that focus is on me if that's how I feel. And so um, in putting you know, the number one focus on how I can help my client get exactly what they want and what they need you know, our clients don't know they want a, an amazing custom concept for their wall until it's presented to them. And, you know, one of the, the questions we've been asking since the very, you know, for years from the very first phone call is, have you thought about where you're going to hang your portraits? And the answer is no, they haven't thought about it. And so if we don't, you know, give them these opportunities, there's no way they could ever, they, they can't imagine these things. They, they, this is part of our job is to give them these options and 
to give ourselves permission for giving those options. And so one of the things that I want to, again, you know, right from the beginning, I want to tell my client, um, I'm going to be asking you some questions about, about your home and about your decor and about the way you live. And, you know, this is going to help me as I, as I custom design something specifically for you, a wall concept that is, you know, just for you and for your home and right for your lifestyle. And, and, you know, this actually hit me today, Dane, this is funny, but I was thinking about, um, talking about this with you today. And, um, you know, my, part of my tagline, you know, 15 years ago, I had real life on my, mm -hmm. on my uh, marketing. And it was one of those things that in the beginning I was told, you know, you know, again, know who you are, find a niche, um, decide what you want to show with your portraits. Um, decide, you know, what your business is going to be. And for me at that time, the only thing that made sense was real life. And part of that was chasing kids around the backyard and that not being quite as accepted then. And so mm -hmm. I wanted to give it a reason. So it was, you know, real life. And then over the years, as I evolved, I, um, my tagline became celebrating real life and photography because I wanted it to sound a little more elegant. Mm -hmm. And what I realized today was part of our our marketing now and our tagline is for the way you live and it never hit me until I started thinking about tying all this together today that you know that I'm still carrying that same thing you know knowing who I am wanting to show real life in the images real relationships real moments real things that are happening it's still all about you know it's, it's tied into that same thing that we're talking about now that it's it's not just about building a wall concept which is what we're talking to them about but we're talking right. to them about how people are going to feel when they walk in and see those images and know what's most important to them. You know, what they're, what they're waking up and looking at every day and how it's going to make them feel. And, you know, that for the way you live tagline, you know, ties it all together. And, mm. and that's really what it's all about at the end of the day. Mm. And now it's just figuring out how to best communicate to that, that to the client. Mm. And, you know, talking about that, you know, building a custom wall concept. That's kind of our our main objective with every client now. And yes, we sell smaller things and image boxes and books and we do all those things still. But that's the main thing is building a custom wall concept for every single person that walks in, in our door. Okay, so first off, I just wish you'd move to town because I want to <laughs> spend more time talking to you because I have 18 <laughs> other topics I want to talk about based on what you just shared. But I do want to take it in order. And you're one of the few clients, I don't do this very often, but I, I'm taking notes like on a, of everything you're saying, and uh, it's, it's powerful. <laughs> and, and by the way, just a little shout out. Uh, last week, Ann Monteith was here in Orange County, and uh, I, I went to this thing she did with Marathon, and um, it was really fun because uh, she pulls she's you up buddy. on screen. Yeah, well, she pulled you up on screen and talked about the progression of your brand and your commitment to what you do. And so much of what you're describing is an evolutionary process. It's not like, you know, it was revolutionary when it first came out, this whole real life idea. Now it seems like there's a lot of folks that kind of have jumped onto that kind of tag or a tag like that because it, it connotes authenticity or whatever. But I love how you're not satisfied with that and you're pushing it. So it's, so if I heard you right, it was real life, then celebrating real life in photography. And then for the way you live, you're thinking about the functional aspect. And what that came, brought to mind for me was again as I as I do more homework on design and what it means to be a designer I'm realizing um, so much of the stuff that gets me the products for clients that will serve them in their life so like if I, I don't care if I'm writing a book I don't care if I'm making a picture or putting it on a piece of like it has to land in a physical product or a something experience that is meaningful for someone else to give it enough value and attribute enough value where they're going to pull out their wallet and spend a lot of money on it. And what I'm, what I'm hearing is like even the idea of a wall concept, that's just a form, but a wall concept is insufficient, especially as the pace of commerce is happening and the pace of what people are coming up with to deliver and the volume of, you know, the abundance of photographers that are in the marketplace. What an opportunity to think through what can I do for the end user from a functional perspective and an aesthetic perspective, which is really the work of a designer. That's what they do. Um, I was reading uh, Dan Pink's A Whole New Mind again this week and was just blown away at his predictions. I guess it was almost five years ago now when he wrote that book about we are in this high touch conceptual age where everyone needs to be a designer. Everyone needs to be a storyteller. 
And it's so, I mean, on some level, that's exactly what you're, you're, you're fulfilling his prophecy. Um, so all that to say, you're awesome. Uh, and then the second thing I want to ask, <laughs> and, and it actually has to do with a lot of questions that are here, is for our clients who don't really understand all of this, you know, mumbo jumbo, and they don't really care, they just want to have a good experience whether they can explain it or not. Um, there is this question of how do you translate this for the client? So for example, Robbie Clay asked the question, um, how do you approach potential clients? How do you target? How do you bring raise this idea of um, a, a real high concept idea of, you know, you're not just taking their picture and you're just selling them a wall art piece, but it, it, you're thinking about the way you live in a meaningful way so that they experience your creations that they're paying a significant premium for. How do you, how do you target and then get the conversation going with your client? Well, as far as targeting, I could talk for a whole hour about finding your target client and marketing to them. Um, but you know, but I do feel like it's important to know who your target client is, and and for me, that is going to be somebody who's willing to invest in their home, um, and not necessarily. You know, I, I hear from people a lot of times. Well, you know, I'm not. I I can't find anybody who's willing to invest in art, or I can't find anybody who's willing to invest in photography. I guess that's kind of the the argument. Well, I'm not looking for somebody to invest in photography. I'm looking for somebody to invest in home decor. And so that's my target client, and or, or both, as Robin asked. Um, but, uh, you know, to, to go and if I had the choice of, of networking with a high-end furniture store or a high-end children's boutique um, or an art gallery, I'm going to choose that furniture store first, that children's boutique second, and that art gallery last. Uh, you know, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, and but you know, finding a target client is one thing. Meeting them and getting them in the studio is another. And that for me has always, always, always been about networking. I am huge on displays, which are you know super, super important to my business. And displays in the right places, and you can't find the right place until you know who your target client is. So again, that's first. But um, displays and networking and, and just teaming up with other small businesses who have the same, uh, you know, like-minded ideas as far as who their target client is and who they're working with. So um, as far as the process goes through the client coming in, into the studio and communicating with them in the right way about what it is that we're really after, so to speak, um, we are going to start that, that conversation right on the first phone call. And it is with, you know, Tell us a little bit more about your home. Tell us a little bit more about your lifestyle. Um, do you like to entertain in your home? Um, you know, do, you know. We just want to find out as much about them as we can. And, and those questions aren't even asked directly like that. But it's just along the ways of, um, you know, just continuing the conversation and getting to know them. We do by the end of every first phone call that that books a session with us. We do let them know that we are going to be communicating with them and asking them some questions about their home and their home decor and the way they live. And, um, and we let them know that those questions are going to be asked so that we can help them and we will be designing a custom wall concept for them. And, you know, what that does is it takes the permission or it, it takes the, um, the pressure off of having to do that right then, but it gives your, yourself permission to do that at another time. And that conversation for us needs to be continued, not only on that first phone call, but during our, our consultation call, which I do a couple days before the session, and then during the session itself, and then during the phone call that we do before our design appointment, which is our sales appointment. And then, you know, for us and in the studio, systems have been put in place so that everything has been talked about, communicated about, and everyone knows what the expectations are, all, all through the entire process before they get to the sales room. And I, I am a firm believer that if it happens in the sales room that you have somebody that is, you know, that it can't make a decision or has questions that you're not able to answer or that, you know, it's, it's too late a lot of times. And so, you know, putting systems in place to make sure those questions get answered and make sure those things get addressed before the sales room I think is key number one to large sales, to comfortable sales, to getting through the end of the sales process and not having somebody go, oh my gosh, I really just can't make this decision right now. 
because really most of the decision making should have been made before they ever sat down so that when they sit down they're into the emotion of the images into um you know into the fun part of making the decision which is mm -hmm. you know this flaw concept has been presented to me and now mm -hmm. wow that was really easy now i just mm -hmm. get to enjoy this hmm. Well, uh, let's take a couple more questions while we can. By the way, are you okay for time? This is too good of a conversation to cut short, but I want to be sensitive to your, your needs because you probably have to jet out too. Are you okay for a few more minutes? I'm really good. I'm having fun. Okay, <laughs> okay good, good. By the way, uh, you're welcome, Robbie Clay. Thanks for, um, for, for that question. A couple other ones that are related. A lot of folks are asking questions like, um, uh, Ginger asked the question, uh, hi, Lori, when do you go to the home for the design and on a related question um, uh, Melissa Thompson asked a similar question do you ever go into the client's home for design or do you just do it over the phone um, that kind of thing uh, how, how would you respond to that um, that's a really good question and that's one of the things that I am working more and more back to I used to be on location and then I spent many years out of my home and and I will tell you, just from past experience, going into somebody's home always, always makes me more money. And so the times that I can go into somebody's home, even if it's not to shoot, if I can go there for a consultation and walk around and make suggestions, I'm gonna make the most money that way. And so right now, I'm kind of paring down. I'm working towards shooting less and less and making more and more, if that makes sense, um, which I can do in, in people's house. But when I don't go to someone's home, um, what we're doing is we're asking them for images of their walls and we're, we're coaching them all along the way why this is important and we do know that it, it's going to get right up to the sales appointment time and we may not have images of those walls and so part of that process and again just putting systems in place for it but part of that process is going to be if we if we don't have them excited enough by the time we've made that phone call before the design appointment that they have those images to us then we, we make sure it happens at that time. And, and the way we do that, and now it's happening less and less that we don't get them, but um, if we don't have them yet, we're, we're just saying on that, on that phone call two to three days before the sales appointment, you know, hey, we're so excited for you to see your images. They're great, you're gonna love them. I'm working on a custom design for your, for your home and you know, would love to get those images from you, for, from you so that we can make sure that this is perfect for you and for your, your lifestyle. And, you know, and, and that, that mom's going to tell us, okay, well, I'll make sure I bring him when I come to the sales appointment. And she won't. We know yeah. this. And so part of the process is to just tell her, you know what, why don't you go ahead and do that right now? I'll wait. Mm -hmm. And then we stop and we wait. And we allow her to go and photograph those walls and get them back to us. So it is that important. Um, now I'm trying to work that into the system earlier and earlier so that we're getting people excited about you know, and the more you do this, the easier it becomes because you realize mm -hmm. how much clients do appreciate this. They love, you know, having somebody playing interior designer for them. They love having mm -hmm. something put in front of them that they can just say, oh my gosh, I mean, I've had people that we put a wall concept in front of them and they just get tears and there's not even images in it yet. <laughs> but they get tears right. because they can see this thing, you know, the idea of it on their wall and they're like, oh, I can't believe you did this for me. I can't believe this was so easy. And, and there's not even images in it yet. You know, they really do appreciate and love the fact that all the hard work and the decision making has been done for them. And, yeah. and I get a lot of times and I'm seeing on the, on the questions even, you know, how do you do this without feeling pushy? And it is a matter of in the beginning, you know, just giving suggestions. You know, if all, yeah. all somebody can say is say, no, you know, that's not really right for me. Um, but we will never know unless we make the suggestion. And so um, I personally choose to build one concept for each client, unless we've talked about multiple rooms uh, where we're going to be doing different things. But in each, in each different room, one concept for each, not showing them five different ideas that they can choose from or 10 different, or a book of wall concepts. Yeah. That, that is not right for my um, studio. First, it's I've seen beautiful wall, you know, concept books that are out there that have, you know, like six, you know, you can choose six images or five images or whatever. And, um, you know, and that works for some people. For my model, yeah. I want to custom design something for each person. And so it doesn't work. Um, but that's one way. You, one way we're getting people super excited about working with us is it is custom for them. Do you do a lot of custom books, too, or just custom wall art? 
We do lots of, of custom uh, books as well. And that's something that I've done for years and years and years. I've, I've custom designed albums for our clients and we do lots of first year albums and attorney albums and family albums. We do a lot, a lot of those. But, um, you know, but the, but the shift has focused. That used to be my favorite thing to do was design books. And now I'm kind of over it. <laughs> hmm. um, now I'm doing a lot of outsourcing for some of that, which people are surprised to hear from me because they know I do love that. But um, you. this just, That's great. I, I've realized, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, we're learning to outsource a lot, actually. Um, I, I, this is way off topic, but now my role is to shoot and I don't see the images again until I place the order to the lab. So I've gotten really good at getting rid of the, the middle part. But um, I noticed a couple people asking about ProSelect and um, we are using a, a software called Preview now. Um, a couple people have mentioned it. It's uh, P-R-E-E-V-U. And yep. Preview is a, a sales presentation software that allows you to actually design walls and des design concepts and move things around. And, um, so that's something that we we are using. That's great. And and now my assumption is it's nice to have a I I, I use ProSelect. I think they're great, but it's nice to have a competitor. My guess is that's going to raise the bar for all uh, projection sales. Both. That's yep, great. I agree. Well, uh, and you know, uh, well, uh, competition's good for everybody. <laughs> yeah. Um, so a couple of things here. And again, again, there's so many great questions, guys. And and, and we we have to be a little bit realistic um, on what we can cover, but. Uh, I think what's really clear here, Lori, is people want you back, so I'm going to beg and borrow and steal to get you back here again. Um, a couple of one of the things that you mentioned that were that are just pragmatic questions. Um, one is Dana Bland says, Lori, I'd imagine you design before a session. Uh, that way, you know what to shoot for. Is that my? I mean, that's what I'm hearing you say. Is that accurate? Yeah, that that is the goal is to is to pre-design with the client and have um, you know at least great ideas to present to them, um, it, and and many times it is just continuing the conversation that we've started and you know we want to keep that excitement built all along the way and so um, so yes if we can do an actual wall concept for someone before I even shoot even better because then like you said I know what I'm shooting for. And, um, you know, and that can even be your quote unquote excuse when you're talking to clients is to tell them, you know, I, I, I would love to talk this through with you so that I can make the very best use of the session and our time together and really photograph for, you know, for what you want to show. And, yeah. you know, and that's a great, great excuse. That's great. Uh, what are, uh, Cassie asked a great question. What are some examples of questions you ask clients to find out what type of wall concept they need? Because I've heard kind of some of the meaning or the goals of what you want to get out of it. Like, for example, um, examples of how they live their life and uh, do they entertain, those kinds of things. Are those, and you said that you don't necessarily ask that directly. What, what are some of the questions that you ask to get the information you need to build the wall concept? <clears throat> well, you know, and that's a really good question. And we're, we're kind of coming up with a little bit more of a, um, a planning guide is what we're calling it right now. Um, mm -hmm. that, that'll allow us to ask certain questions and lead them through the process. Up until now, this is not going to be a helpful answer, but up until now, I'm, I'm so invested in people and in relationships that it's very easy, it's a very easy conversation for me to have to start talking to people. And, um, you know, one thing that I would suggest and, um, you know, maybe challenge you with as you're just even answering the phone, you know, one of the first things that is, is going to be a question for most clients is, or, you know, potential clients is going to be, you know, hi, I saw your stuff at such and such is, or, you know, found you online or whatever it's going to be. Can you tell me how much your eight by 10 is? Can you tell me how much your sessions are? Can you tell me how much your package sure. are? You know, whatever it might be. And every single time we want to make sure everyone gets our product menu, book, you know, if they, if they book a session with us, but mm -hmm. we're going to redirect that question. And you know, the answer is absolutely. We'd be happy to send you our product menu. Um, you know, tell us a little bit more about who we're going to photograph. You know, that's the first question. And so as they answer and tell us about who we're going to photograph, we're continuing to ask questions about those people. Yeah. And honestly, the more you can get someone else to discuss and talk with you, the more they're going to love you and be invested in that relationship and, and what you're going to create together. So um, we really that's just right. want them to talk and I want to get to know them. And so, you know, the, the questions just kind of come naturally out of just getting to know the client 
And then, you know, and I guess that's part of the personal design concept idea for me is that, and why I didn't want to have, you know, a dozen different ones for them to choose from is because, you know, it, it, I don't think there's one right thing that people could choose from. And mm -hmm. a lot of times it's not even those specific questions, although the client thinks they are, but it's, mm -hmm. you know, once I get those images of the wall or we're talking about where we're going to hang it, I'm going to suggest you're going to love our canvas gallery wraps or you're going to love our wild survey frames or you're going to, you know, love, you know, we've got a great line of traditional framing that sounds perfect for you. I can't wait for you to see it. So we're just mm -hmm. planting seeds. And then it, when I get a reaction from them, oh, I'm not really sure about that, that hand painted framing. Then I'm going to say, you know, well, sounds like if you're, you know, you're going to love the canvas gallery wraps. It's a frameless option. They can move into any room. I can't wait to show them to you. And so that, so I'm just designing around those answers that I'm getting, even though the answers aren't, do you like wild survey or do you like canvas wraps? Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. I, it does. And, and honestly, in my experience, clients don't really even know the answer to most of those questions because they, they, they just have no, a feel. They don't. And, and I think that most of what you're describing is helping doing doing 90 percent of the work so it makes it very easy for the client to make a decision like even your phrasing tell us more about um, who we're going to photograph well that's actually subtly helping them make a decision of who they're gonna pick to make the photograph for them uh, which is it's, it's, it's not just clever it's helpful like there's so much that the 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 client is going through I know I pay a premium for people who help me make the right choices and, and I'm happy to do it. Uh, what I don't like is when I'm given so many options and I'm ill-equipped to answer uh, the questions, I, I need someone to kind of walk me through that, which is which is, sounds like exactly what you're doing. So really, really helpful. Um, my like really quick question for Melissa Thompson, uh, do you offer payment plans and if so, have you seen an increase in sales when you do? Just kind of, this is a quicker question. Uh, and that's a good question. We do offer a payment plan, even though it's not anything that's formal. And so I, I would never let a client know that we we have payment plans available unless I see that it's going to be a problem for them. And then, sure. you know, if, if that's one of the things that comes up, then I can say, you know, we'll let you pay this out any way you'd mm -hmm. like. And really, I am that easy. And our only two rules are we'll, we'll begin the order when half is, is down and you'll mm -hmm. get the order when it's completely paid for. So um, as far as an increase in sales, I mean, I, I don't know that there's been an increase in sales. I, I will say that in the last two years have been the first time I've needed to offer a payment plan, which I think is interesting. I think, you know, the, the change in the economy has maybe brought that about. I don't think it's brought about less spending because we're definitely averaging more. But, hmm. um, you know, just making allowances for how people feel about the economy, I think is something totally that's reasonable. important. And a lot of times, um, yeah, a lot of times to a man, especially if you can tell him no interest at all, you can pay this out however you'd like, makes really good economical sense to him. And, yeah. um, you know, and so we can lead a man along in that way. But, you know, you I know, think the you know, bottom line you're always, is... You're always leading men you know, along. That's what I noticed, Lori. You're always leading men along. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Just and guys are easy, right? <laughs> <laughs> we might be easy, but we're not cheap. So come on. Hey, uh, well, you know, related to that, it's funny that <laughs> you true. mentioned the the credit card thing, uh, or the, the like. It, it's interesting the relationship. I haven't thought about this before, but credit was so easy to get um, two years ago, and credit is so challenging to get now, or it has been the last couple of years. It's. I wonder if on some level, payment plans were happening two years ago, but we just didn't work it out. It was always through credit cards and people would throw it in a credit card and they'd work out the payments later. And, and now we're financing them basically yeah. uh, through the process. So it might not be that big, big of a shift if they're still, if they're still have averages that are significant. I wonder. Yeah. And I think that, um, and they, they appreciate here and there when, you know, and I, you're, you may be exactly right. Cause it usually always is with a man in the room hmm. and it is when they say, you know, it, they're kind of going through that in their mind of, well, sure, I can put this on a credit card, but it's going to cost me X amount in interest. Right. And so if I can tell them, you know what, we'll work that out for you and do it at no interest, it makes, you know, ding, 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 okay, we can do this. But, you know, I, I think the biggest thing is, is photographers are getting into this and, you know, when really thinking about, um, you know, how they can incorporate some of this into their own workflow is, is really, it comes down to, you know, genuinely caring about your client, genuinely caring about 
um, you know, not just the finished product, but how they're going to react to it for years, how it's going to, you know, be a part of their lifestyle for years. And, it, mm -hmm. and if you make that number one and can, and on, I mean, when it comes down to it, it doesn't even have to be about making that product, you know, figuring out what's, how to make that the best, but just figure out what is best for the client in general. Mm -hmm. And caring mm -hmm. about their kids, caring about them personally, asking personal questions about, you know, um, you've got a new baby in the studio and just talking to mom about the birth experience and how dad reacted and how the other kids are handling things and really caring and listening. And those things are what tie people to you and allow you to do what's best for them. And, you know, in the end, everybody wants to make each other happy. You know, I know in the end, my clients even want to make me happy. You know, I'm, I'm offering suggestions to them and they're saying, you know, oh, that's, that's amazing. I love it. I can't believe you put that together for me, you know? Yeah, yeah. So uh, here's what I'm realizing is we're almost double the time that we normally do. And uh, I, we, we need to end the Sorry. call now. And, I, and I, I, also, I also feel you're awesome. I mean, are you kidding? It's, it's fantastic. And by the way, I just saw a shout out. Uh, uh, Mike Hanline jumped on Twitter and said, listening to Nordstrom Photo and Dean Sanders for the past 30 minutes or so, seems like yesterday I met Lori, not over 10 years ago. And uh, Lori, you are somebody, yeah. that's such a great Been friends for uh, a long representation. Time. Well, and, and you know how much esteem I have for Mike, too, and White House and, and so many uh, great people in our industry. But I think more than anything, as we're finishing up the show, I just want to, on behalf of a whole bunch of, a big crowd of people who are fans of you, and I, this is not flattery, this is just really just grit, gratitude, uh, you've done a lot for our industry. You have, uh, in the middle of storms, took a stand. You have created new things. You keep pressing the threshold. You're one of the smartest business minds in our industry, in my opinion. And... Uh, we could take literally the is of all of the shows I've done over almost 120 shows. Uh, there are still questions pouring in, pouring in, and I've never had this many questions on one, one show and any single guest. And it's because of the things that you're inspiring. I hope that doesn't mean I didn't answer in. them. <laughs> no, no, they're they, they actually just Thanks, want all your Dane. secrets. Thank it's you very real, much. it's really all it is. And you're welcome because we we're grateful. There's no secrets. And uh, <laughs> well, there's there's true to that. So, uh, so here's my request. Would you come on again someday if we, if I beg you to come back again? Of course. Yes. Okay. I'd love okay. to. <laughs> Great. <laughs> and, uh, if you guys have found this valuable in any way, please, please, please be sure to follow Nordstrom Photo on Twitter, N-O-R-S, uh, T-R-O-M-P-H-O-T-O. N-O-R-D. D-D. N-O-R-D-S-T-R-O-M. Thank you. I'm, I'm not a strong visual speller. That's okay. Um, so if that's helpful, uh, please give I'm her a shout out. I'm typing in the chat uh, thing, Nordstrom Photo. That's perfect. And uh, uh, also, if you want to ask questions in the future on future shows, the sooner you get the questions and the better. Again, we have a ton in the queue that we just couldn't get to today. Uh, you did mention, uh, there's one little question here that Kim asked, uh, Dane, what was the name of the book that I spoke of? It was, it was Unmarketing was the book that Lori and I were addressing. Did you like that book, by the way, Lori? It was a great book. I've read it twice. I loved it. Yeah, I got the audio. I got the audio um, version. Lots of good that stuff. Really... And the, the book I'm reading now, um, I figured I'd have it right here, but I don't. The book I'm reading now is called "People Buy You," and it's a it's a hmm. great book about um, that I think every photographer should read because it's it's about um, you know they're not buying your pretty pictures, they're not buying your product, they are buying you, and you got to figure out who you hmm. are and how to best communicate with them. So um, great book. And, um, and if it's okay, Dane, I want to mention our yes. tour this summer. Oh, um, I was about to just yeah, go there right now. That's kind of how tell Dane me and I about... started talking this week. <laughs> well, okay, and, and I, I want, because I, I, you know, you invited me to come to the thing in LA and, and uh, I'm in Palm Springs that weekend, but I'm trying to figure out another day. But you're going to a lot of cities and uh, JB and company are coming too. And I, I'm wondering, can you fill us in on, on what's coming this summer? Yes, thank you. And, um, Thank you, Jeff Rogers, for he he posted the link for that book, People Buy You, and that's a great book. Um, but I called Dane because I wanted him to come be in a guest, be a guest speaker for us in LA. I'm doing a tour this summer with JB and Diet Sali, who are amazing photographers and have done a couple of tours, and um, they've been primarily wedding focused in the past and are now shifting um, some to portraits as well. And so we just kind of decided to join forces this summer and hit the road, and we're going to be in 25 different cities. And you can um, go and see all the, the listing of the cities 
don't judge us on the website. We're working on it right now. But um, there is a, a great list there of all the places that we'll be. And it's it's this it's Salee Nordstrom Tour dot com or turn the key tour dot com, which turn the key is is the name of it. So you can go to either way. But Salee Nordstrom Tour dot com. And we would love to see you on the road. That's great. And um, can you put that link in the chat room as well? And I and uh, yeah, and I, do that? I think Melody's asking in the design book, Dane. Oh, the design book. This is so geeky, I guys. I don't know if you yeah. want to look at it or not, but if, if you're ever thinking about designing on a grid, if you ever heard about Promise, Tangent Man, and other people, and they talk about the grid, uh, this is the best book I've ever seen. I, I got it at South by Southwest. It's called Ordering Disorder, Grid Principles for Web Design. But honestly, unless you're like Jeff Rogers, you're not geeky enough for this. This is really geek, geek central. <laughs> uh, but I, 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 I dug it. And, and part of it is because I'm developing a bit of a fetish with design in general, both graphic and design of furniture and design of communities, just design in general. That's becoming a designer is, a, is my new my new project uh, in life. And I don't know if it'll ever be a professional project, but it's one that I, I care a lot about. And it honestly has been inspired by a lot of folks in our industry. I mentioned Mike Hanline earlier and going to White House and seeing how they have designed that company uh, for brilliance and all the different um, influences in this industry that, that have had that. Uh, I just, I get excited about it. Thank you again, Lori, for being on the show today. Uh, thanks for all you guys mm -hmm. tuning in and uh, look forward to uh, connecting you guys next week. Thanks, Lori. Thanks. Bye, everybody.